There are many powerful beings in the world of that time I got reincarnated as a slime and although most of it belongs to the non-human characters, there are occasions where humans can rise up and compete at their level. So continuing on with the humans of the Tensra world, in this video we'll be taking a look at Chloe Albert, one of the few individuals who can be called the strongest in the world. As always, we'll be going over her backstory as well as her powers and abilities and it goes without saying that there will be heavy spoilers for her character and story so here's a spoiler warning just in case. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribing to the channel for more Tensra content in the future. To start, Chloe Albert is the childhood friend of the demon lord Leon Cromwell before they were transported to the Tensra world. But unlike Leon who is a stray otherworlder, she is a summoned otherworlder that was summoned by one of the western nations when she was just 10 years old. And like many summoned otherworlders, she possesses a strong will and is infused with an incredible amount of magic skills. But because she couldn't manifest a unique skill, the high magical concentration is slowly burning away her body and she will likely die within 5 years. That's why the nation that summoned her gave her away to the Freedom Academy. It's here that she will become friends with Kenya Misaki, Ryota Segiguchi, Gil Gibson and Alice Rondo who are otherworlder children suffering from the same curse as her. She would also meet Shizu Izawa when Shizu became her class teacher. Eventually Shizu left but later Rimuru would visit the Kingdom of Ingratia to find the children and try to save them because of the promise he made to Shizu. Rimuru was introduced to Yuki Kagurazaka, the head of the Free Guild and he would become a teacher at the Freedom Academy where the children were. After spending time together, Chloe and the others became quite attached to him. One day, after Rimuru saved the merchant Mao Maus, he along with the children were invited to have dinner where he would learn about the dwellings of the spirits from one of the hostesses working there. Rimuru decided to visit the location and his mission was to find some powerful elemental spirits to fuse with the children to stabilize their bodies. The children took turns to receive the spirits and when it was Chloe's turn, a powerful spiritual body had appeared but according to Ramirez, the spirit is a very dangerous entity, a being protected by the spirit of time. When the great sage analyzed the energy content of the spiritual body, it discovered that the power of the spirit was incalculable and had no maximum limit but unable to stop it, the spirit entered Chloe's body and stabilized her. With Chloe and the other children safe, Rimuru decided to go back to Tempest but before he left, he gave Chloe the anti-magic mask that belonged to Shizu and it would play a big role later on. So moving on, when Rimuru discovered that Yuki was the mastermind behind the plot to destroy the Jura Tempest Federation, he decided it was too dangerous to have the children stay at the Freedom Academy. That's why Chloe along with the others were brought to study and live in Tempest. During the Founders Festival, Chloe would meet Hinata Sakaguchi and she became quite attached to her. That said, not much happened later on as Chloe continued her studies and training in Tempest. Her biggest turning point happened when Rimuru decided to bring her and the other children to the Holy Empire of Lubarius for the musical exchange. What happened here was that Grandpa Rosso had attacked the Grand Cathedral where the Tempest Orchestra was playing to draw out Hinata and Rimuru. And because he knew about Chloe and her importance to Hinata and Luminous Valentine, he intentionally targeted her. However, Hinata was able to protect Chloe by sacrificing herself but before she died, she entrusted her Moonlight Rapier and Holy Spirit armaments to Chloe. Now in my previous Hinata video, I only briefly talked about what happened to the both of them so as promised, I'll try my best to explain it fully here. First off, when Hinata was struck by Grandpa's attack, her soul was slowly dissipating but when Chloe came into contact with her, Chloe's powers was unknowingly triggered. This had caused Hinata's soul to end up inside of Chloe and the both of them disappeared but because of the unlimited imprisonment inside of Chloe trying to consume Hinata's soul, she had to fuse Hinata's soul with her own to prevent that from happening. In addition to that, Chloe's powers also sent them 2000 years into the past. Now this happened mainly because Chloe possesses the power of time leap and she was able to awaken her powers after she went to the dwellings of the spirits and the spirit that inhabited her body wasn't actually a spirit but instead her powers from the future. And according to Chloe, after awakening she could access some of the memories from her future self but only in fragmented pieces and she can only access her full memories when the time leap has been activated so with that said, apparently she has also been placed in the time loop living through the same events over and over again to prevent a future where everyone she cared about died. Essentially, in all her previous time leaps, Rimuru never became a true demon lord and he always dies to the Eastern Empire which causes the destruction of the Jura Tempest Federation. And in all those alternate timelines, Hinata would always be killed in front of the Chloe later which triggers her time leap powers, meaning that Hinata's death is the trigger to activate her powers. But luckily for Hinata, the current timeline seems to be the best possible one because of a few reasons. Basically, it all comes down to Chloe receiving Shizu's mask and her not letting Rimuru leave the Kingdom of Ingratia earlier which causes him to run into Hinata outside. Because of the delay, Shion and the citizens of Tempest were killed which prompted him to become a true demon lord in order to save them. This key factor is the reason why the current timeline is the best one and almost everything is now completely different from Chloe's previous loops. That's why Chloe wanted to make sure that the events that lead up to the current timeline remains intact. 
So in order to achieve that, Chloe and Hinata decided to seek help from the Luminous Valentine on this time period. So with Hinata's guidance, Chloe told Luminous about the future caring not to reveal information that would alter the future too much and eventually Chloe became close friends with Luminous. Later, Chloe decided to become a hero and to hide her identity. Hinata came up with the name of Kronoa, which created an alternate personality within Chloe, something similar to Rimuru's Wisdom King Raphael. But anyways, Chloe spent the next thousand years as the hero Kronoa and around 300 years before the events of the anime, it was finally time for Chloe to seal Valdora temples away. So Chloe decided to give control of her body to Hinata and using absolute severance and unlimited imprisonment, Valdora was sealed inside the sealed cave, setting up the condition for Rimuru to meet him in the future. After the battle, Chloe revealed that her soul will be disappearing because her younger self and Leon Cromwell were about to be transported to this world. But although Chloe and Leon were transported at the same time, their arrivals were different with Leon arriving 300 years earlier whereas Chloe arrived at present day. That's why Leon is an adult while Chloe is just 10 years old when we meet their characters. Now back to the topic at hand, Chloe's presence soon disappeared from her body and like I said, after being named Kronoa, a third personality born from all the negative emotions of Chloe was created and without her, Kronoa was going crazy so Hinata had to constantly fight for control over the body. While Hinata still had control over the body, she would continue to serve as the hero Kronoa and her final mission was to save Shizu Izawa from Leon Cromwell. Hinata would then give Shizu a mask and leave her, setting up for when she would give it to Rimuru in the future. Then when it was time for Hinata's future self to arrive in this world, Luminous helped to seal Kronoa's body inside the Holy Ark and waited for the future where Rimuru would come and save Chloe and Hinata. With that, we can finally go back to present day where Yuki had released the hero Kronoa from the Holy Ark. Again, since Chloe's presence wasn't there to control her, she lost control and started to fight Rimuru, Valdora and Leon. However, Rimuru was able to stop Kronoa by placing a replica version of Shizu's mask on her and he would enter Kronoa's consciousness to save Chloe and Hinata. When he entered her consciousness, he was greeted by a projection of Shizu and he would find Kronoa there as well. Kronoa was still filled with all the negative emotions of Chloe but after seeing that Rimuru, the person they love still alive in this timeline, she finally calmed down. Kronoa then revealed how Chloe's soul was trapped inside the unlimited imprisonment and she couldn't be saved. But we all know Wisdom King Raphael is overpowered and she requested permission from Kronoa to alter her skills. Kronoa gave Raphael the permission and so Raphael combined the unique skill Unlimited Imprisonment, Absolute Severance and Usurper into the ultimate skill Space Time King Yogg Sothoth. More on the skill later. After obtaining the ultimate skill, Kronoa evolved into a Theosophic called Manas, giving her the ability to release Chloe from the Unlimited Imprisonment. So yeah, that's basically everything on the time leap story and Chloe mentioned that apparently an alternate version of Rimuru was the one responsible for putting her in the time loop in the first place so that she could create the best possible future outcome. So having said that, Hinata was saved as well and with her abnormal presence gone from Chloe's body, Chloe and Kronoa were finally their complete self. Chloe can now freely switch between her younger or adult form and Chloe at this point had already become quite powerful, deserving to be classified as a catastrophe class threat level. The reason being that Chloe now has two hero's eggs inside of her, one belonged to herself while the other one was from Hinata and they both managed to hatch, making her the first ever true hero to have two hero's eggs. Additionally, when Grandpa was defeated by Luminous, he asked her to fulfill his last request and that was to pass on his ultimate skill Hope King Serial to Chloe because he saw her as the future hope of humanity. Now let's talk about both the ultimate skills that she acquired starting with Space Time King Yogg Sothoth and like the name implies, it gives Chloe the ability to manipulate space and time. There are 7 sub skills and the first one is called Time Leap, the ability to leap backwards in time under special conditions. The second one is called Time Stop which is an ability to stop time for a limited duration and it can only be accessed by people with the same ability. Unlimited Imprisonment is the third sub skill and it traps the target in a complex number of spatial dimensions, even sealing away most of their skills and it is powerful enough to even trap a true dragon. Absolute Severance is another sub skill and it's a powerful attack that damages the target via the severing of spaces, overwhelming them with both physical and magical attack and it is capable of harming even a true dragon. As for the remaining three, they are the sub skills from the unique skill usurper incorporated into the ultimate skill. This is the first one, allowing Chloe to steal any skills or abilities from targets but they have to be stronger than her. Boss Takeover is another one and it works exactly like this but it can be used on weaker targets. Finally, Copy just allows her to copy any skills or abilities of targets instead of stealing them. Now, for Hope King Serial, it's a skill born from the unyielding will of humanity and the true hero. It has a total of 3 sub skills and the first one is called Consecutive Melt Slashes and it allows Chloe to fire a barrage of Melt Slash. Life and Death Manipulation is another one of the sub skills and it basically gives her the absolute authority over life and death. Fortitude is the last one and this sub skill allows Chloe to strengthen herself and her equipment. Speaking of equipment, the Moonlight Rapier and Holy Spirit armaments that Hinata gave her was able to evolve to the Mythical Grey after 2000 years of usage. 
Now, moving on, they all returned to Tempus to discuss about the situation and they were joined by Guy Crimson. During the meeting, Guy noticed Chloe was a true hero and wanted to gauge her abilities. He activated Time Stop and Chloe responded in kind, changing to her adult form. No one had noticed what happened, but apparently Chloe was able to hold off and match Guy Crimson blow for blow. Although Guy wasn't serious about fighting Chloe at the time, it was definitely still impressive. Anyways, later when the Eastern Empire was about to invade, the citizens of Tempest, including Chloe, were sent to take shelter in the 100th floor of Remorous's Labyrinth. However, before the Eastern Empire attacked, spies from the Empire had infiltrated the Labyrinth and were targeting Masuki, Honjo, and Rimuru, but they were quickly defeated by Chloe and Benimaru. Afterwards, Chloe decided to stay back to watch over Masuki and help with the defense of the 100th floor. Eventually, the Eastern Empire was defeated, but the Labyrinth suffered heavy damage and Phantom King Feltway finally showed himself along with Emperor Rudra, who has been taken over by the Manas Michael. Feltway along with his Phantom Commander Zalaria and Kornu attacked the Labyrinth, wanting to capture Ramirez and kill Masaoki. When Feltway confronted Masaoki, Chloe came just in time to protect him. She fought Feltway for a while, but when Feltway had sensed the ultimate skill Hope King Serial inside of her, he activated Regalia Dominion, the ability to take control of users with the ultimate skills under the Virtual System. He took control of Chloe, or in this case, her Kronoa persona, but she managed to fight out the control by shutting herself inside the infinite imprisonment and reverting back to Chloe's childlike form. However, this caused Chloe to lose access to her ultimate skills and even lost contact with Kronoa. But when Rimuru offered to help remove the control circuit of Hawking Serial, she rejected because she knew that Kronoa would be able to break free herself. Later, Feltway launched his attack on the world and Rimuru went to Demolot Dagro's domain to help fight them, but it was a trap to lure Rimuru out and kill him, so Michael was already there waiting for him. Michael proceeded to use Time Stop to take Diablo, Ultima and the others out first, leaving Rimuru for last. Although Rimuru could now perceive the suspended world of Time Stop, he was still unable to move, and just as Michael was about to attack him, Chloe was able to arrive just in time to protect him. She had finally regained all her powers thanks to Kronoa, and she managed to sublimate Hope King Serio as well without any help from Rimuru or Seal. Now, because Seal was still processing ways to access the suspended world of Time Stop, Chloe would be fighting Michael for now. And regarding the suspended world, only skills in the form of information particles can be used, meaning that magic and arts cannot be used at all. Also, the laws of physics did not apply, so there's no resistance or external forces like gravity. Basically, any skills used will be in the purest, most destructive force, so getting hit by anything in the suspended world will result in serious damage despite having defensive abilities. Also, the person who initiates the time stop is at a disadvantage because he consumes a large amount of magic to maintain. But anyways, back to the fight, both Chloe and Michael are evenly matched in terms of physical ability, and their ability to manipulate the information particles is even as well. But in the end, Chloe was able to defeat Michael with her space-time abilities and she used Reverse Fate to literally reverse time for Michael. She turned the time back to the point where Michael had not become a Manas and without self-awareness, the body of Rudra started to fall apart. Chloe then reached out to Michael, offering to shelter the lost skill and so the voice of the world responded by confirming that the three elements of courage, hope and justice have gathered within her. She managed to acquire Justice King Michael and using it to fill the missing elements of Hope King Serio. Both ultimate skills were integrated into Space-Time King yogg -Sothoth to create the absolute authority over space and time, the ultimate skill Space-Time God yogg -Sothoth. Honestly, Chloe is basically just a time god at this point. And with that, Chloe released the effect of the suspended world but apparently the Michael she defeated was just a parallel existence. So she decided to return to Tempest and let Rimuru deal with the real Michael. Now there isn't any mention about her EV but there are a few occasions where Seal mentioned her power to be incalculable so she is probably near the realm of Guy Crimson or Emperor Rudra but I'm just spitballing so take that with a grain of salt. Anyways, that's all on Chloe Albert and her alternate personality Kronoa. Hopefully we'll get to see them use more of their true powers in future volumes. Also, I personally think that she and Rimuru is a match made in heaven since both are godlike beings. But what about you? Do you agree and what are your thoughts on the character? Feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell for more Tensura content in the future. Thanks for watching and as always, stay safe everyone.